Hey now, Deadheads, we are back again with yet another exciting Grateful Dead release, probably the last one of this summer, and that is, of course, June 10th, 1973, RFK Stadium, uh, the breakout of this year's Here Comes Sunshine CD box set. Uh, but before I get into what's inside the unboxing, then the, the typical review, I want to give you a little bit of a story. Uh, if you saw my last video talking about quality problems of Grateful Dead pressings, uh, specifically ones that were sold from Dead.net. Um, got a funny story for you. Um, so about a few weeks ago, I was out in San Francisco for those last few Dead & Company shows at Oracle. I was out there with my partner, with my mom, you know, a little family trip out to San Francisco. And you know, my first night there, I got a message on my YouTube video, on that YouTube video. It felt a little bit like getting called to the principal's office. I'll put a little screenshot up on the screen right now. But you can see why it felt a little bit like getting called to the principal's office. Uh, this kind of set forth a chain reaction uh, of a few pieces of communications and culminating in a phone call. I ended up uh, hopping on the phone with someone from, from Rhino Music, and they were concerned. You know, I, apparently uh, a few folks at Rhino had seen my video. I heard there were some concerns from David Lemieux as well that, you know, people weren't getting these pressings in the condition that people were meant to get them in. Uh, you know, they get test pressings, they get their own copies from their pressing plants, and uh, the, the Rhino folks, uh, David, uh, everyone from that side of things received some pretty good pressings of that Dave's Picks 23 record, and so they were surprised by how many people were getting subpar, low quality, uh, oftentimes damaged pressings. So I actually had a pretty good lengthy conversation with this uh, representative from Rhino Music, and they were very interested, and, and we had a, a really productive conversation about supply chains uh, and where things might be falling apart. You know, if, if they're getting a high quality product at this point, but they're seeing people get lower quality products at this other point later down the road, you know, we had a, a thoughtful conversation trying to pinpoint what's going wrong and where. It's probably a little bit too early for them to be implementing what they've learned from that conversation and similar conversations that they're having with, with other deadheads that they're getting in contact via forums and, and YouTube and communities like this. But I gotta say, this release, they really hit the mark. Uh, I am very satisfied with the quality of this release. There are things that uh, made me a little bit nervous it's eight LPs, there's a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong, but they really knocked it out of the park on this one, and so I, I'm really excited to share it with you. When we look at the outside of this box set, there's some really beautiful details here with the glossy printing. Uh, this is kind of just a, a special little touch that they've added. Didn't have to do it, but they did it. Uh, and it really, you know, the, from the second you unbox it, you take the plastic off, it feels like a very premium box set, which it is. You can see that I saved here the uh, Hype Sticker 8LP box set, 180 gram vinyl, limited edition of 9,000. Uh, really exciting stuff. And of course it's mastered by Jeffrey Norman. Uh, that's how you know it's gonna sound fantastic, like most of the Grateful Dead releases from uh, the modern era, most of the Grateful Dead vinyl releases. Additionally, we have a sticker advertising the good old Grateful Dead cast. If you're not listening to it, do yourself a favor and give it a listen. Uh, Jesse Jarno and the gang are doing a fantastic job producing uh, really wonderful stuff. This most recent season is about uh, Watkins Glen Summer Jam, and then they're going to transition that into Wake of the Flood 50th Anniversary Edition. Uh, so exciting stuff there. Uh, when we open the box, yeah, something that I've been talking about for quite some time now is the lack of liner notes, and this delivers. Not only is it liner notes, but it's it's a creative presentation of those liner notes. It's not just a, a single folded up piece of paper, you know, poster sheet that gives you a little bit of a story, but they, they put these essays on this cut out uh, wrapping of a piece of paper that envelops all eight of these records. Now, as you might know, it's an eight record box set spanning three sets of Grateful Dead music. That last set, uh, they're playing with a few special guests, including a couple of the Allman Brothers. Uh, all of these records, all, all, all eight of these records in, in my pressing that I got sound fantastic. Uh, not a single flaw, not a scuff, not a scratch, not a dent, not a blemish on any of these records. Another thing that I had voiced concern about is these polylined black paper inner sleeves. I, 
I actually went out and I bought a full 50 pack of these MoFi Original Master Inner Sleeves. For those who know, these are really, you know, the, the gold standard of uh, inner sleeves. Audiophiles all around the world swear by them. And so I was ready to just take these paper inner sleeves, chuck them in the recycling, and uh, use these MoFi ones. But I didn't need to. I might still replace them, but we didn't have the uh, little pieces of paper, the little dust, uh, black pieces of dust from, from the paper inner sleeves like we did on past releases. And so it seems like these paper inner sleeves are of higher quality than what we've seen in the past. No issues here. Now, when we take a look at the music on these records, you know, it starts with Morning Dew. How many Grateful Dead concerts do you know of that start with the Morning Dew? Not just a first set Morning Dew, but an opener of Morning Dew. Um, really kind of setting the tone of this is going to be a special show. This is going to be a special concert that's worth paying attention to. Uh, like the rest of the shows in this uh, Here Comes Sunshine box set, of course we get Here Comes Sunshine. And a bunch of the songs that eventually will be coming out later on in that year in 1973 with the release of Wake of the Flood. Um, and so you get Eyes of the World, you get uh, a few other Wake of the Flood songs that, you know, really, really great stuff uh, and that kind of preview, that those early versions. When this release first went on streaming before it even came out on vinyl, I got a text from a friend of mine saying, the heck is Wave That Flag? Uh, and that's another early version of a song, of a Grateful Dead song, that pops up on this. I said, listen to it. Does it sound familiar? Wave that flag? Of course, it's U.S. Blues. Uh, and those early Robert Hunter lyrics featured on, on Wave That Flag. And this isn't you know, the first time they've put out Wave That Flag on a 1973 release, but it's always fun to hear those early versions of those songs that we know and love. Now, I found the bird song on this release to be fantastic. Playing in the band is nice and long, drawn out. And of course, it is 1973, and they're doing some special stuff with Truckin. This is the year that they really started to transition Truckin and kind of build it into uh, a different song from what we grew to, to know and love in um, especially the 1972 Europe 72 versions, but even before that, 1970, 1971 Truckins, they're good but they don't hold a candle to uh, what we got in 1973 and beyond, in my opinion. Now that third set with all the special guests, it's a little cacophonous. It's, it, there's a lot going on, a lot of guitars, a lot of, um, a lot of powerful musicians all kind of competing for the spotlight. It's one of those things that you can tell everyone was having a very good time, having a fun time. Uh, and so it's nice to have that captured on an official release uh, from the Grateful Dead. And on that subject of official releases, I've got a prediction to make. I think that this release is going into the Pantheon, the Pantheon of great shows. You've got, of course, it's not gonna hold a candle to Cornell 77 or, or Vanita 72, but you've got those short lists of favorites, those Fillmore East, Fillmore West, uh, those Winterland shows uh, for others, you know, Alpine Valley or Harper College, but you know, people have their lists of favorite Grateful Dead shows. And I think that this release, for me at least, is going on the short list I suspect it will for others. I think they did a beautiful job. Uh, they did a great job packing, packaging this. They did a great job putting this together. And the music is fantastic on this. And so really great stuff released from the Grateful Dead in this box set. So kudos to them. They uh, knocked it out of the park on all accounts. And so that's it for today. Um, I'm sure you recently saw, uh, if you follow the Grateful Dead on vinyl, you saw that they released or they announced the pre, uh, pre-orders for Wake of the Flood 50th Anniversary Edition. Really beautiful blue kind of swirly version as that Dead.net exclusive. The picture disc, the black um, edition standard black vinyl. Uh, and then of course a Barnes & Noble exclusive that I think it's kind of like Coke bottle colored. Uh, I don't really pick up those Barnes & Noble exclusives, but uh, if you do, let me know down in the comments below why you love those Barnes & Noble exclusive pressings. But uh, the full gamut, not a lot of merch. They often do a lot of merch with those 50th anniversary editions, and I'm kind of fine with you no know, t-shirts. I do love that little bird logo. I don't know, I don't know if it's a, a crow or a raven um, that's on the, the original uh, LP on the label. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of okay with, with no merch or the lack of kind of going over the top with Wake of the Flood. Solid album. I love the album. Uh, you have to love the album, but uh, I don't know if I need all, all of the, 
uh, pomp and circumstance that they often do with that. Uh, so really excited about that. I think that's coming out in September. Uh, so of course we'll have an unboxing and a review video here as well. Um, but otherwise, I think that's it for this summer. Uh, I hope everyone had a fantastic summer tour, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, caught the city dates and I caught San Francisco. Had a, had a great time in San Francisco with my family. Had a quick run in with Jay Blakesburg. That was pretty cool to see Jake's, Jay Blakesburg in a uh, gallery exhibit of some of his photography. Uh, meeting, meeting one of those living legends in the Grateful Dead universe. Um, just generally had a fantastic time in San Francisco, a really good end of an era for, for Dead & Company. Uh, looking forward to see what comes next. Maybe it's uh, Billy and the Kids, it's J-Rad. We'll see. Maybe it's new local cover bands popping up in Brooklyn. But really excited to see what the future holds for fans of live Grateful Dead music. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much for, for checking out this video. Uh, if you want to see more like this, if you want to see my Wake of the Flood video coming out in about a month, I guess a couple, almost a couple months now, um, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, building this community helps us get on the radar of uh, folks at Rhino who are concerned about quality and concerned about the experience that people who buy these records have. And so the more we can grow this community, the more uh, activity that we can get via the comments down below, uh, the, the more our voices are heard as fans of Grateful Dead records. So consider it, consider hitting that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you checking out this video. Peace.